So we all know that automation is a really useful thing in music production. For me, it's an essential tool, but there's quite a lot of ways to use automation. And that's what this video is about. All of the different tricks and hacks that you could use to spice up your automation. Now, as a starting point, you'll just see a normal track. But if you press A on your keyboard, you'll see automation. So as you can see here, there's quite a lot of automation happening. How do you know which element to automate? Well, the answer is pretty simple. If you go into your instrument, so in this case, we've got the Diva open. And for example, you want to just take a listen to some of the elements of your song. And you think that it could do with some movement, say in the cutoff. If you just click on anything here, like you click on cutoff, it will show the frequency here. The reason why it's white is because that's the original state of the automation. If you want to return it back to its original state, just click on this left arrow and there it goes. But then obviously you can go ahead and change any of that automation. If you want to automate something else that you've not automated before, anything that you click on, say the decay, it will just appear there. So it's a really quick way to get your automation appearing. But if you want to go back to say to cut off, we just literally have to click on cut off and click on that left button. Now, another thing you could do with automation is you can actually draw automation in. So for example, if you click on the fixed grid, but switch off, it would kind of just draw it any way you want and is not trying to snap it to any grid. But say you do want to do that, you want to snap it say to eighth grid, just click on eighth and it will snap it to eighth. You want to snap say to a full bar, it will just do that. So let's just go back to fixed grid off and we just do some sort of shaping like that. So if you click on any MIDI clip, for example, if you just right click on it, you can actually insert different shapes. So for example, I want to insert this shape here. I can do it like that. And then I can change some of the shapes because there are different breakpoints automatically given to you. I can remove a breakpoint just by clicking on it once. And I can just add another breakpoint by clicking on it there, like again. And I can choose the shape over whatever selection I want to choose from. So I'm selecting over four different bars here. So drawing in your automation is one way of doing it, but if you want to have a more live feel and actually play your automation and record the automation that you have played, what you can do then is you can select the instrument that you want to automate, then press Control G to group it. And then the thing that you want to automate, in this case, frequency, we'll right click on it and we'll map it to macro one. Frequency is now mapped to macro one. And as you can see, as I move it, the levels there are changing. So if we just right click on that again, or just click up here where you've got MIDI mapping, we just enable MIDI mapping. Take our controllers and just twist the knob of the thing that you want to control. So in this case, I've twisted one of the knobs. By the way, this will only work if you have set your preferences to remote. So as you can see here, MPK Mini Mark II has remote on, it will not work without remote on. Let's just unselect MIDI and I'm just gonna twist the knob now. And as you can see here, I'm not using the mouse, I'm just twisting the knob. So let's just go ahead and record some of that automation now. So you can see there that uh, quite a bit has been recorded. And if you scroll in, you can just see hundreds of little dots. It's uh, not very nice to look at. So what you can do then is just click on simplify envelope and that will just remove kind of those dots and just simplify the entire thing. Now, as you can see here with this instrument here, because it's an external instrument, you can only just see frequency. And the reason why you see that is because that's the only thing I've automated so far. I could, for example, click on resonance and automate the resonance here. And suddenly you'll see resonance appear here as something that you could also map to another macro and then also automate during live play. But if you want to do more than that, you just click on the configure button that will actually open the external application and you just click on the things that you want to automate. So I'm automating release. I'm going to automate this envelope here. So everything I click on, even an effect like that, dry wet, everything I click on, 
will just suddenly appear here. So I could say assign all of these to different macros and you could just see them all appearing here. So you've got everything you need. So say you want to always automate those different parameters. In that case, what you can do then is just save that as we can call it diva automation. So every time I want to automate something, I've got all of these things mapped to my keyboard and I've got everything that I need in one place so I don't have to keep setting it up. And so there's other things you can do. So for example, you could cut and paste by pressing Control C and or Control D. You can cut and paste a region. So you can say cut and paste all of this region there. If you don't like any of the automation, what you can do then is just right click and clear the envelope. And if you want to be super precise, you can actually just right click on one of the notches and click edit value and say I want this to be 50 and I want this one here to be 100. Just right click on it and it will be more precise and give you more precise values. If you press A again and you say want to delete part of your song, say this part here, and then press A again, it actually also deletes the the automation. So one way around that, say you want to keep the automation in place, but just delete the MIDI piece, just click on options and lock envelopes. So now when you delete the MIDI, the automation stays in place. So you can record different MIDI over the same automation. And if you're not sure if your automation is locked, there is a little button here called lock envelopes and you can just unclick it if you want to unlock it. Similarly, if you just want to not show automation at all, just click this button. But it's the same as clicking the A on your keyboard, which is what I tend to do a lot. Now, when you move your automation lines, they do move kind of fast and they're quite difficult to control. If you press shift, it gives you much finer, slower resolution in your movement. And if you press out, you can see here the mouse cursor changes a bit and it just gives you a bit of a loop on one side or the other. We select this entire range, right click, and we'll just move it up a bit like that. If we then press out, it will just kind of gradually move the automation upwards, which gives you so much more control. So if you want to delete any automation at all, you can just press the section you want to delete and press on the delete button. Make sure you've got things unlocked as well. All delete does is it just deletes what you've put in that section. So the automation before and after that will Main, be maintained. So if we just delete a, high, a larger section there, we will delete all of that. I've just pressed the delete key, but it's still going to automate it from one point to another. So if you're a visual person like me and you want to see all of your automation in your track separately, you could just click on this button. So make sure you've got the automation you want to see here and just click on this button and it will appear in a separate lane. So I can see filter and resonance now in two different lanes and I can see how they're moving against each other. So lastly, automation isn't just shown in your tracks. You can actually go into a clip and do automation there as well. So all you need to do is go into a clip and defaults to notes. And so you just see all the notes being played there. But in this case here, we want to click on tool tabs. So here we can see a little blue line here. And in terms of the automation <clears throat> itself, what we can do is go into MIDI control and do quite a bit of automation against MIDI data. So we can, for example, control pitch bends. So let's just do that here. So we're just going to increase the pitch bend here of this track. And you can do multiple different types of automation, actually. So for example, you can do portamento time can be automated. So all of these kind of MIDI events can be automated within a clip. All Linked does is say, this is the clip. And what's happening in the next clip is going to be linked. So if you want the next clip to start at position 61, then they'll be linked. But if you just click unclick linked, the next clip will have nothing in it. Similarly to track automation, you can go in and edit values and you can insert different shapes. So let's just do that now. And similarly, you can use the same types of controls. So I can press out and do the curve control, which I really like. And within the clip itself, you can do automation of the sounds that are in the clip and the effects that are in the clip. And speaking of effects, we are automating here the instrument. But if you really want, you can also automate any of the effects that are also with the instrument and you can separate them out. You can see them separately. You can add lane for each automated envelope, which shows them all. And what I find really useful is device on for reverbs. So if you want to just have 
a delay or a reverb, say, for a particular part of the song, just keep it off for all of the song except for the piece that you want to hear it on. I find that really useful. In addition, if you have return tracks, you can just go to your mixer and then automate the values that are coming in from your return tracks. So if you want some parts of your track to be sending high levels of the return effect, you can just increase it there to very high. And if you want it to be almost nothing, you can reduce it. So in this case here, we have a reverb. You can hear that there's a lot of reverb coming in from the mixer. And then at this point here, hardly any. So we're going to end now with what I think is the coolest thing about Ableton's automation, which is anything that you automate, if you move it to another track or to a return track. So say, for example, here we now have the vintage verb. You can see that there is some automation on the vintage verb there. If we just move that into a return track, it remembers the automation that you put there. So it's pretty cool in that respect. And if I wanted to say copy that reverb and just put it in a brand new track, just pasting it there. Once again, the automation has been remembered. So I think it's really cool for things like auto filters and that sort of thing, because you may want to do that on multiple tracks or just try it out. So that's pretty much it for automation. Um, I hope it was interesting for you. I think I've pretty much covered all of it, but if I've forgotten something, please let me know in the comments. So thanks a lot for your patience and I hope you enjoyed the video.